This is the Behringer RD6 drum machine, which is a clone of the classic Roland TR606 from 1981. This review is based on the current firmware, which is version 103. To see what's inside of the box, check out our unboxing video. I bought this drum machine with my own money, so here's my unbiased and honest review. Hello everyone, this is... The RD6 is available in a few colors, this being transparent blue. The casing and the knobs are completely made out of plastic, just like the original was. It feels very light. The knobs do seem a little bit wobbly. All in all, rather on the cheap side. Again, just like the original, but still very much okay considering the price. Volume knobs for the individual instruments, accent level, the distortion section, Tempo, Instrument Selector, Mode Selector, the Sequencer, and the Patch Bay. The Mix Out Output, Standard Quarter Inch Mono Jack. Whenever you hear the drum machine in this review, we recorded it from this output straight into an audio interface with no post processing. Six Mini Jack Outputs for the individual instruments. The Open and Closed Hi Hats share an output. So do the low and high toms. Whenever you plug something in there, it takes away the respective instrument from the mix out. The individual outs are not affected by the distortion, nor by the main volume knob. The start-stop input. You can plug a foot switch into there. By pressing the foot switch, you can then start and stop the sequencer. I can't imagine many scenarios in which this would be useful, but it's there in case you have your hands full and you want the drum machine to start playing. A USB B-Type connector. When plugged into your computer, you can use Behringer's synth tool to update the firmware, manage your patterns and change some internal settings. The RD6 supports MIDI over USB, but not audio over USB. It's class compliant, so there's no need to install a driver to use it. The RD6 is powered by a 9V DC power adapter, which is included. Unlike the original TR606, you can't power it with batteries. On the front panel, there's the aforementioned patch bay. Here we have sync in and out. These two trigger outs send a plus 15 volt pulse each time the high and low toms are triggered. A mini headphone jack. It shares the volume control with the mix out. The RT6 is an analog drum machine. All sounds are generated by analog circuitry. Bass drum. Snare drum. Low tom. High tom. Cymbal. Clap. Open hi-hat. And the closed hi-hat. The clap is in addition to the original TR606 sound set and was borrowed from the Boss DR110 Dr. Rhythm. The clap shares a spot on the instrument dial and the volume knob with the cymbal, but each have their own independent sequencer track. This switch selects whether the cymbal or the clap is displayed on the sequencer. The cymbal and clap volume can only be adjusted together. Unfortunately, the clap volume seems a little bit low to me in comparison. I like the clap to be a bit louder, so I often have to turn the dial all the way up. But then the cymbal is too loud. True to the original TR606, we have exactly zero sound shaping parameters for the instruments. None whatsoever. Everything, including the pitch of the kick drum, is fixed. We can only turn the volume up or down. Hi-hat and open hi-hat form a choke group. One silences the other when it plays, which imitates the behavior of a real hi-hat. If you program the closed and open hi-hat together on the same step, 
you get a third sound, almost like a closing hat sound. Listen to this. First a closed hat, then an open hat, and finally the combined sound that resembles a closing hat. The sounds can't be panned left or right. The drum machine operates only in mono. There's no such thing as presets or kits on this machine, which isn't particularly surprising given that you can't change any sound parameters. The noise floor is pleasantly low, nothing that would bother me when using a compressor or distortion. Speaking of which, just like in Beringer's 303 clone, there's a switchable distortion section with controls for distortion, tone and level. If you like the sounds of the RD6, you can check out our sample pack on Patreon. The RD6 has two pattern groups, with 16 patterns each, so 32 patterns in total. Playing and editing patterns is of course done in true 303 and 606 style and is separated into play mode and write mode. If you want to brush up on how to do that, take a look at the first episode of our Drum Machine 101 course. The currently selected instrument can be live recorded by tapping the right next button. Each pattern has a maximum length of 16 steps. To make it shorter than that, press scale function and the last step. No steps are lost if we shorten the pattern, so we can use it as a live performance tool. If we need longer patterns, we can quickly chain consecutive patterns together. Just press the first and last pattern and they are played in a loop. The RD6 has a global or total accent. We don't place accents individually for each instrument, but rather on a dedicated accent track that affects every instrument on a given step. With the accent level knob, we can dial in the amount by which steps are accented. At the leftmost position, the accent does nothing. No sub steps, whole steps only. Nope, this thing can't swing. Nope, everything on the grid. All steps are quantized. No, but to be fair, technically there are no parameters to automate here. The tempo can be adjusted here. The BPM isn't displayed anywhere and you don't have any markings, so it's always a rough guess where you're currently at. You can't tap the tempo and there's no metronome. The BPM ranges from 40 to 300. The tempo setting is global and not saved with each pattern. The sequencer can be set to four different tempo modifiers, which are saved with each pattern. Normal speed for 16th notes, double speed for 32nd notes, three quarter speed for eighth note triplets, and one and a half times speed for 16th triplets. The scale selector doesn't do anything on its own. You have to press scale function once. The change is applied when the pattern loops again. If you press pattern group and right next, you can change the sync options. The RD6 gives you a few seconds to make the changes. The default is the RD6's own internal clock. Then there's MIDI, MIDI over USB, and Trig, meaning the sync in on the patch bay. For the latter you have a few clock rates to choose from. There's really not much in terms of convenience to speak of here. You can't see which patterns are used or empty. You can't even copy or paste patterns. Don't be fooled by the label copy and paste down here. These refer to the track write mode, where you can build a song structure. These are not copy and paste operations for patterns. You do, however, get a function that overrides your patterns with random garbage. Just press clear and start stop.
First, a simple one-bar pattern. Don't Lose My Number by Phil Collins. Dry? And with some cheesy 80s gated reverb added in post. Then we have On Fleek by Cardi B. We have no substeps on the RD6 sequencer, so to make the 30 second note trap hats work, I had to switch the patterns to double tempo to get a finer resolution, and then chain everything together. And finally, Flim by Aphex Twin. Same trick with the 30 second notes as before, but at a much higher BPM. You can see the sequencer running at double speed here during the patterns that contain 30 second notes. As you can imagine, this eats up the few pattern save slots we have very quickly. Let's add a bit of distortion. As always, you can find easy to read transcriptions of these and other patterns on Patreon. The good news? The RD6 has a song mode, accessed by the track write and track play modes here. The bad news? It is absolutely horrible to program and I would never use it in a live setting. But let me know in the comments if you'd like a tutorial on it anyway. Like mentioned before, there's the possibility to use the pattern length function as a performance tool. Likewise, you can use step reset. When you press the right next button in play mode, the sequencer jumps to the first step. There's no fill feature, but you could use the second pattern group as storage for fills. You can then quickly switch between pattern group 1 and 2 to play a fill now and then. That would cost you half of your precious save slots though. That's quite a high price to pay. There's no dedicated mute or solo function, you have to be quick with the volume knobs instead. The instruments can't be triggered manually, so you can't do any finger drumming. Developing beats during a live performance is quite the challenge. You can't copy patterns and patterns can only be cleared in write mode, while the sequencer is stopped. You can't clear single instrument tracks or erase notes with the running light of the sequencer. The only bug I could find was related to chaining and pattern groups. If I chain a series of patterns from group 2, for example 1 to 6, and follow that up with another pattern chain from group 2, like 7 to 10, the RD6 mistakenly chains pattern 7 to 10 from group 1. You should be hearing Cardi B on fleek right now. If I change the pattern group back and forth once, we hear the right patterns. Minimal blinkiness, but the boot sequence is pretty nice. The RD6 is currently on sale for about 159 euros or 179 US dollars. To sum it up, it's a good clone of a classic drum machine with the addition of distortion and a very nice clap, although it's a little too quiet. While researching the clap volume problem, I found a fantastic website on modding the RD6 called muffets.com. You can find the link in the description below. I think I'm going to try the symbol clap level ratio mod soon. So, keep an eye out for the video in which Captain Picant accidentally destroys his RD6. Unfortunately, the RD6 also adopted many of the shortcomings of the original, like the sequencer and the low number of pattern slots. I wish Beringer would have given it the same improvements as their 808 clone, the RD8. What alternatives are there? In the same price range, there's really only the Korg Volker Beats, but that one has no accents and even less memory for saving patterns. There's no shortage of 606 clones out there right now, but the next cheapest option, the Cyclone Analogic TT606, costs twice as much already.
Roland themselves have introduced their own modern recreation of the TR-606 called the TR-06 a few weeks ago. It's a digital drum machine and it has a very capable modern sequencer. Lots of sound shaping parameters, but it costs almost two and a half times as much as the RD6. All in all, the RD6 is not a bad choice for the price in my opinion. It's very minimalistic, which makes it a good drum machine for beginners. Check out our Patreon. We made a helpful cheat sheet for the RD6. Link in description. That's it for this review. Hit subscribe and ring the bell, so you don't miss anything. Is there anything else you'd like to know about this drum machine? Let us know in the comments.